Hello, Shui here. I'm a carpenter in Japan. Today, I'm building a sliding door in the center. Here will be a decorative shelf with a handrail. It's a vertical octagonal handrail. Once installed, the entrance will be completed. Today, I'm building an entrance. First, I install the decorative shelf and handrail on the right. I use Japanese ash for both materials. The decorative shelf height is 75 centimeters from the floor. Meanwhile, the octagonal handrail will be installed in the corner vertically. But there will be a space at the top and bottom. I install it as it looks like floating in the middle. I'm measuring the angle at the corner of the decorative shelf and handrail. The angle is just drawn as a diagonal line, without being exact in the drawing. So, I set the piece of octagonal wood on the corner of the shelf board to decide the angle. It is 135 degrees. I'm going to cut it at the angle. It'll be my first time installing this type of handrail. I think I will struggle with it. I start cutting with the shelf board. I cut it diagonally and finish it neatly with sandpaper. Of course, since it is Japanese ash, I will finish it with oil. So I sand it even after hand planing. I measure the shelf board height. It will be 750 mm from the floor. I set the laser on the 720 mm step ladder, and it fits without 1 mm of a gap since the shelf board is 30 mm thick. That rarely happens. <laughs> I install the furring strip and place the shelfboard on it. I always use three regular iron nails to secure it, one more than usual. I check the position of the shelfboard so it fits neatly with the corner handrail, then secure it. Under the octagonal handrail, there will be a 15 cm space. It will be joined at the top and bottom with penetrating tie beams, and the middle will be secured to the decorative shelf that I'm installing now. It is designed to be fixed in three places. Next, I cut the octagonal handrail. I cut both ends a little with a miter saw, then chamfer it to finish the ends. Then, I install the decorative tie beams on the top and bottom. It will be joined to the octagonal handrail using a dado joint because it won't fit if I cut a tenon. It is good if it fits the surface neatly. However, the tie beam is a little thicker. It's tricky to cut a groove, but I'll try my best to join them with a dado joint. Japanese ash is hard to chisel. When you cut a groove on a diagonal part, it's a good idea to chisel off the corner before cutting the entire groove. It can chip if you don't do so. But since it's a hardwood, it won't chip into pieces like cedar. If the chisel is well sharpened, it can cut off the material sharply, even on a diagonal piece. Since the wood I'm cutting is thin, it's tricky to cut. Even if it's a round column like a temple, we cut it when the columns are still octagonal. After cutting all groups on the column, we cut the octagonal column into hexadecagon and then the round shape. Compared to that, it's easier as it's still an octagon. I 
fit the tie beams temporarily. I use the Kigoroshi technique and fit it. When using a data joint, I need to cut a groove and insert them, meaning it's challenging to make it right angle. I cut the groove at the same depths, make it right angle, and then secure it. This work is more likely to chip corners when removing than when joining them. If I apply machine oil or oil for oil guns, they won't chip even if I join them or remove them several times. But the oil or paint won't be applied to the part when finishing. So I don't use them. Instead, I install them carefully. I also cut a groove on the other side. It's my second time cutting, so I'm pretty used to it and can cut a little easier. At this point, I mark the height of the shelf board. This handrail is a small material. Since it's octagonal, though, I can't use a carpenter's square to measure it. So I set it on the straight board and mark each surface at a right angle. Given I fit the tie beams temporarily, I install them on the top and bottom. I first secure the tie beams to the handrail, then bring it to the entrance. The top and bottom of the tie beams are almost invisible. I use only one screw to secure it from the top and bottom, where it's invisible. All screwed areas are secured with glue. Entrances styles have changed nowadays. When we built a house in the old days, we built a large and splendid entrance and parlor. I don't mean to imply that the houses nowadays are not splendid, but they are becoming smaller and more compact. In the old days, when a family visited a house for New Year greetings, about four or five people were able to enter and stand at the entrance. It's January and cold, so they closed the door and could talk there for a while. Grandmas usually sit down at the entrance and chat with visitors for several hours. Nowadays, people won't stay at the entrance anymore because they only use it to go in and out. Bathrooms must be user-friendly since they are actually used. But if it's an entrance, we just take off shoes and pass by. So it's just made in a good design with a small space. That's why entrances have become smaller nowadays. I measure the space between columns and check the vertical with the laser. Then, I screw it from the top, bottom, and side. The joint of the handrail and shelf didn't fit snugly. I have glued it, but I will have to remove it and adjust the end by checking it with my hand. I wonder why it didn't fit. Potentially, the tie beam joined by the dado may be twisting, or the handrail might not be equilateral octagonal. Now, I install it again. I will check the vertical as well and install it. This is located right in front as people walk in the front door. People can easily notice if the right angle is shifted even a little. So I measure and adjust them several times and secure them. I use a clamp as a joint with a shelf board. I apply anti-crack to the top and bottom of the handrail. I simply apply wood glue, and it works well. Now that the decorated shelf board and the handrail are installed, 
Next, I'll build a partition wall between the entrance and the shoe rack storage. This partition wall isn't an ordinary wall. A single sliding door will partition it. Of course, there is a wall in the center, but people can walk around it. First, I measure the position of the wall. I will build the wall 750mm from the front of the shoe storage. In fact, I only saw the half pillar first. The square pillar would be too thick, so I'm using this half thickness pillar. I use a dado joint under the half pillar. On the top, I will cut it straight along the ceiling board. The initial design was different. Kamoi was to be installed horizontally, and the half pillar was to be installed under the kamoi. I'm going to take off a part of the ceiling board and secure it from above. I first temporarily place the half pillar. Next, I measure the height of the kamoi. I take off a part of the board next to the half pillar. I cut the combo next. The fitting will be a hanging side door. There is no door stop when opening the door. From the groove, I calculate the door's length backward, making sure it stops at the groove. Then, I measure the length between the pillar that I temporarily installed. I'm installing the combo now. It's easy to install since I can move the half pillar freely. Once I move it outside and then move it back, it will easily fit. I use a tension rod to apply pressure and ensure it fits well. Then I screw it. I will finally secure the half pillar at this point. So I set the foundation on the top of the ceiling and secure the half pillar firmly. Then I install the mullion in the middle. I set the foundation stone under the mullion. It will be a mullion from the foundation stone to the kamoi. I will screw the mullion from the bottom of the foundation stone. I dent the foundation stone where the screws will be driven, then secure it with two screws. Oh! Since one screw is protruding from the foundation rock, 
I'm making a hole in the concrete. I then install the wall stopper that also serves as the baseboard. The top of this wood will be used to stop the wall. It serves as a baseboard when you look at it from the side. There is a groove under this wood. Later, the rock baseboard for an entrance will be installed there. Now, I secure it. When it secures the wood, I always use a tension rod. When joining the small woods, I can use a clamp. But to attach materials well, like in this case, a tension rod is the best option. Especially when joining woods that are just cut. I use a tension rod to apply pressure so it won't move, then secure it. The tension rod is extremely useful as any other tool. Since I don't have glue for concrete, I apply urethane glue to secure the foundation rock. As the discharge hole is stuck with glue, I screw the back to open the hole. Even if I open the hole with a screw, I can still use it for a little while because the hole will be stuck with glue. Now, the building accessory is installed. So, I install the frame at the entrance and then the boards on it. I rent a screwdriver from Hikogi to help. It is very lightweight and portable. Now, the entrance is complete. The decorative shelf, handrail, and wall here separate it from the shoe storage. It took a lot of work, but it became a nice entrance. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.